Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channel's Television. I'm Melissa Antwonka. On the news this hour, amidst high-level horse trading, intense politicking and subtle manoeuvres, uh, well, the... Talking about the slot of APC's national chairman seat as Comrade Adams of Chomale fights back. Elsewhere, there seems to be no hiding place uh, for electoral offenders as Bill for Electoral Offences Commission passes second reading at the Senate. And Governor of Imo State, Senator Hobus Adima, fires warning to looters of the state's treasury, unfolds his economic recovery plans. Welcome everyone to the program. We begin this afternoon with news coming from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory as the suspended national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Comrade Adam Sushomale, has filed a motion of appeal against his suspension by a federal uh, capital territory court on alleged misconduct. Mr. Shomale is making a foreground appeal bordering on miscarriage of justice and the use of an interlocutory injunction to suspend him as the party's national chairman. And Mr. Adams of Shomale will no longer seat as the national chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, at least not for now. This is because of the Abuja High Court, presided over by Justice Dan Lemmy Stenchi, which granted an order of interlocutory injunction seeking his suspension pending the hearing and determination of the main suit. The application was filed by the national vice chairman of the party in the Northeast, Mustafa Saliu, and five others. The court held that the party wrongfully continued to retain Mr. Shomale as its national chairman while he is still under suspension by his ward in Isako West, Ward 10 in Edo State. Justice Senchi further ordered Comrade Shomale to stop parading himself as a national chairman of the party and directed the party to stop acknowledging him in that regard. Although the lawyer to the suspended national chairman of the APC declined comments, lawyer to the plaintiff spoke on the reason behind the action. What it means is that uh, from this very moment, uh, the first defendant uh, Mr. Adams Oshiomole ceases to be, uh, to be the chairman of APC. That's what it means. At least uh, is it is an interlocutory injunction. What it means is that until the substantive suit is decide, decided, he can no longer act as the chairman of APC from this very moment as the court has ruled. We came for the order because we believe in the rule of law. That's, that's simply the reason why we're here, to, to make sure that uh, the Constitution is respected. Uh, our contention is very simple, that Mr. Oshomole was suspended by his ward. And if you are a suspended member, uh, you cannot reap uh, the benefits of full membership. So all we're saying is that his right as uh, a member of APC is uh, in abatement at the very minimum at this point in time. That's what we're saying. So we just wanted the law, uh, we just wanted the court to give voice to what members of his local ward have said. And for Mr. Shomale's party, the All Progressives Congress, they are ready to respect the decision of the Abuja High Court, which granted the interlocutory injunction. The APC's acting national secretary, Mr. Victor Gerdom, explains that the party is, is law-abiding and that its national working committee will meet soon to deliberate on the challenges it is currently facing. As a law-abiding party, we will respect all lawful court order and uh, progress from, from that point. And uh, very soon, the National Working Committee will meet and uh, you will hear further from the party. But just to say that all the All Progressive Congress will respect all lawful order of courts. We will also do that. 
But the story appears different in the home state of the party, the APC in Edo, where the state chapter of the party has been commending the court's injunction. The state chairman of the party, Anselm Jesua, um, the Edo state governor, Godwin Obasaki, and his deputy, Philip Shaibu, gathered at a press conference in Benin City, where they agreed that the order of the court will fast-track the peace process to end the crisis in the state. This is not a time to rejoice. For us, it is a very sad commentary. Not only because we helped to put that man in office, but because we also have a responsibility to ensure that whatever he does rubs off on the rest of us. But what is even more, the likelihood that a man could abuse his office was so manifest that we feared that the very tenets and the foundations of democracy were being threatened. I believe with what has happened, the court has provided our party a proper atmosphere and a conducive environment for the reconciliation that we, we seek so that we can achieve the peace that we need to provide and deliver on the promises we made to our people and to appropriately prepare for the elections that is imminent this year. So let's get more perspectives from the two sides. And we're talking one party, the ruling party. Honorable Sam Samson, I beg your pardon, Samson Osage. He's a former lawmaker and a governance expert and also the senior special assistant to the Edo State Governor on Public Affairs, Mr. Adaze uh, Mwanta. Both join us from our Abuja studios. We'd like to thank you for joining us at this time. I'd like to begin with you, Honorable Osage, and, and that is what's your interpretation of the judgment, and that's the interlocutory injunction that we all heard about yesterday. Well, thank you, Millicent, for this opportunity to, to bear my mind on the developments in the APC, with particular reference to the interlocutory injunction granted res to restrain the national chairman of the party, Comrade Adam Sushumale, from functioning in his capacity as the national chairman. Uh, for me, the order is uh, calculated to cause mischief uh, within the ruling party, the APC, and uh, it is an order that ought not to have been granted at all, uh, given the fact that there was no basis for it. Uh, because the matter is in court, and uh, as a lawyer, one fears the possibility of uh, running into contempt of court, it will be important to look at the facts, which of course uh, precipitated this whole action. The purported suspension of the national chairman from his ward was done by a suspended ward chairman with a few renegades within that ward executives. And the constitution of the APC, Article 21, does not contemplate that a few members of the ward executive or indeed of any organ of a party should arrogate themselves the powers of the entire organ. After all, democracy is by the rule of the majority. Indeed, even at the local government level, Esako West local government, where Chief Akokia is the chairman of the party, Chief Akokia did not preside over the ratification of the purported suspension from the world. And of course, when it got to the state, the man as Lemu Jesua, who eventually presided over a meeting of an enlarged ESCO, inside government house, did not also have the locus at that time because he was already also suspended by a vote of no confidence by the state working committee to preside over the ratification of the purported suspension. And of course, there was no decision from the zona, the South-South zona executive of the party, which is required in terms of disciplining an officer of the party at the national level. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the very foundation upon which this interlocutory injunction was based, or is based, does not exist. It's shaky and it cannot stand any time, any day. From and Mr. M. Wanta, I must uh, do hold on because we, we have quite a short time to talk about so, a lot of issues on this matter. Let's find out from Mr. M. Wanta, what's your response to some of the things Honorable Sage has been saying with regards to um, the interlocutory injunction? 
I think very quickly I'll say that it is quite unfortunate when you hear a lawyer in one breath describe a court order as an act of mischief and in another breath says he does not want to be guilty of contempt. That's contempt. And basically that was a beautiful decision. The rule of law was upheld yesterday because the, national chairman, the former national chairman of the APC, Adam Tushomole, was duly suspended on the 12th of November 2019 by the World Executive. And of course, when you talk of organs of a party, we have looked at the APC constitution, and I speak as a constitutional lawyer. Article 11 is very clear on the powers of the World Executive Committee. They have disciplinary powers. And it was on the strength of the disciplinary powers that he was suspended. And he had a window of appeal. He did not appeal. He was duly suspended, and that suspension was adopted and ratified by the, the local government executive committee of the party, provided for under Article 11 of the Constitution, and the state executive committee of the party also ratified that suspension. So it was a red carpet suspension. And of course, that's what the court said yesterday, that you cannot be suspended by your party as a member and continue as national chairman because your membership is what makes you a national chairman. So if you are no longer a member of a party, you cannot be the national chairman. And it has been restrained. And I'm happy that nature abhors vacuum. And of course, the process for replacing Adam to Shomali has begun because the constitution is also very clear. Article 14 2 talks about in the absence of a national chairman, either the national vice chairman. And if you don't have a national vice chairman, the zonal vice chairman takes over. Let's most likely so away. Money for eternal democracy Let, let's APC. most likely away from, from the court. Um, let's look at the, some of the issues. I mean, what are Mr. Shomale's sins? Um, they've talked about his leadership style. Some even talked about the tenets of the party being threatened under him. Uh, those who want Mr. Shomale out are accusing him of playing major roles in APC's misfortunes in Rivers, Bayelsa, Zamfara, Taraba State. Honorable Osage, is it not fair to assume that this is the case? It is far from the truth because the national chairman of the party had sought to bring discipline within the rank and file of the party. And if in a particular state the wrong thing is being done and the national chairman insists that the right thing should be done, especially by way of conducting primaries for the selection of candidates, as in the case of Zamfara and even some other states and even rivers, you cannot now accuse him, you know, if a negative outcomes comes out of the entire process. The national chairman is national chairman. He comes from one state. He comes from one local government. He comes from one, one world. So he couldn't have been the cause of the crisis that engulfed some of these states that led to the defeat of the party in, order, in, uh, in the general elections. In any case, okay. the national chairman also fought to and nail and worked very hard to bring in states that were not within the APC fold before into the party. In any case, those who are accusing him of being responsible for some losses within the party have forgotten that even the presidential election that was won by the Mr. President, you know, saw Mr. President securing much more votes, you know, than he got in 2015. So the national chairman worked hard because as at the time he assumed office as national chairman, he, he met a party that was in crisis, that was in turmoil. The current crisis you are facing that the party is facing is precipitated by the personal ambition of people who are seeking second term and probably people who are looking at 2023 uh, national elections, presidential elections, and doing their calculations and thinking that Comrade Adams or Shumole may not be a willing to in their hand. That is the truth because the truth must be told, politicians normally think of the next election. So that is the reason you see what is going on. And oh, on the home front, my, my brother, uh, Evata, knows, knows, too well, knows too well that the organs of the party he named purportedly suspended at Damso Shumole were fashional organs. And these have been established. Even the case leading to the Talukutri injunction, you know, was an abuse of court process because the same matter was filed before another court within Abuja uh, Judicial Division. So these are matters that, of course, uh, will be debated at the level of the appeal court. And it is democracy at play. And I'm very happy to say that, uh, be that as it may, what has happened, it is democracy at play. The fact that people could resort to court. You know, on a break now. We'll come back to continue our... with you on this issue, uh, Ms. Mwata and Honorable Osage. Still to come on the program, after the legal storm on the Emo governorship election, Governor Hopis Adima is now in a hot chase after Treasury looters. We'll bring you details when we return.
Welcome back to the program. The first is some of our stories in brief. President of Senate Ahmed Lawan says he is disappointed at the current state of the isolation centers for coronavirus at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Guagualada. The Senate president and some members of the Senate visited the isolation center to inspect the facility. He says he's unhappy with the lack of preparedness and the state of the isolation centers, which according to him is yet to be completed. Going back to our discussion, we've been talking to Honorable Samson Osage, former lawmaker and governance expert, also as well, senior special assistant to the Edo State Governor on Public Affairs, Mr. Adaze Mwata. Thank you so much for uh, your patience. I must come to you, Mr. Mwata, and that is supporters of Oshomale countering that uh, Mr. Baseki wants an automatic ticket, does not want primaries uh, because he's scared of strong opposition. And so getting um, the national chairman, Oshomale, out will pave the way uh, for Mr. Basake to easily get his second term ambition. Is this fact or fiction? Help us understand this. Yeah, thank you. I like the way you've put it. I think it's fictional for anybody to think that a sitting governor who has performed so well will have issues in getting re-elected. You know, it's quite unfortunate because Oshomale created a crisis in Edo APC. There's a group called EPM. My brother seated there, uh, Samson Osage, is one of the coordinators of that group. The only thing they do is to distract the governor. They keep creating crises. They talk of bond blast, which, of course, is self-inflicted. And when you look at the crisis in APC, with the ouster of Ushomole, I can assure you that normalcy will return to a do APC. And that is why the governor has been saying that. We cannot have a national chairman that plays opposition politics in his own home state. The EPM has become a cancer. And with Oshomale's ouster, I can assure you that you will not hear of EPM again. It dies a natural death. So that the government can focus because elections are, is around the corner. And I think it's a time for the party to come together because now we can have reconciliation. Because you cannot use a big problem to solve a small problem. I don't think there's any crisis. Now that Oshomale is out, you can now see that those who claim to be aspirants will be given a level playing field because the governor doesn't have any role to play in the primary process because he is one of the aspirants. And I assure you that Edo people we give him their mandates, starting with the party primaries, whether direct or indirect. So there's no cause for alarm. Now that Adam Toshomole is out of the way, we cannot make progress as a party. And Honorable as I said Osage. before, it is resurrection morning for internal democracy in the APC. Yes, Honorable Osage, are you guilty of this uh, EPL membership being a cancerous disease? Are you part of that? And I must also ask, because many believe the president and perhaps the leader of the party, uh, Mr. Bola Metinubu, are docile on this subject. And why is this? Well, Millicent, um, let, let me say from the onset, um, I, I didn't want to start uh, mentioning names and attacking personalities for this program. We discuss issues. You see, Millicent, leadership, leadership involves deploying the ideals you have to develop a people in terms of their own environment and their own development. When a leader fails in all respect to be able to lead and get the people along in his, governor, in his governor's approach, then it is failure on the part of leadership. I am a, one of the conveners of the Edo People's Movement. It is a support group that came up in order to give vent to the numerous complaints that our party members were having and were about to leave the party. We did that to sustain the membership of the party. And at the end of the day, the party is actually stronger for it. Now, it was the approach of the governor himself in not tolerating dissenting voice or even opinion that has led to where we are as of today. But let me tell you this. If they now claim that Oshomole, you know, was or is the problem within the party, have they forgotten how this government in the Edo State came into, into effect, how it came into force? If he didn't want the party to succeed, if he didn't want the government to succeed, will he in the first place put all he has to ensure that this government comes to power. He, my brother talks as if the Talukutri injunction of yesterday is a perpetual injunction that, that, that have no end. He speaks as if there is no option left for Shobole himself to exercise as a free-born citizen of the great country of us, Nigeria. Of course, that is the purpose they want to achieve, to foist a situation of helplessness on the system, on the court, and on the party machineries in order Gentlemen. to make sure 
that they get the national chairman out we, of the We, we know this is an problem. issue that we'll keep talking about, but we'd like to appreciate your time. Um, Honorable Samson uh, Osage, former lawmaker, governor's expert, and also the senior special assistant to the Adusta Governor on Public Affairs. I'd like to thank you, Ms. Adazi Mwansa. Thank you so much for your time. All right, moving on to other stories now. The Independent National Electoral Commission, they've also thrown their weight behind the setting up of the Electoral Offenders Commission. This is because the uh, Southwest Development Bill, which went on yesterday, which passed second reading. Another bill also was that the Southwest Development Commission be strongly, uh, rather strongly opposed by two senators who are concerned that the bill seeking to establish regional development commissions may end up balkanizing the country. But back to the story of uh, INEC, where the chairman of INEC, Professor Yakubu Mahmoud, in his address, this is day three of the electoral legal framework retreat holding in Lagos, he highlighted the importance of the Electoral Offenders Commission. According to the INEC boss, the commission is aware that the matter is being handled separately by the National Assembly and therefore not part of the bill to be considered at this retreat. However, according to the um, INEC chairman, they're looking forward to the expeditious passage of the bill for an act for the establishment of the National Electoral Offences Commission, sponsored by the Senate, Senator Abubakar Kiari, and co-sponsored by Senator Ovie Mwagege, which passed second reading on Wednesday, the 4th of March. It was also on record that the Electoral Offences Commission Establishment Bill 2020, sponsored in the House of Representatives by Honorable John uh, Dige, passed first reading on Thursday, the 27th of February, 2020. And Retreat also, uh, the Commission is proposing new areas of amendments to the Electoral Act, drawing from the experience in managing elections, including matters arising from litigations, dealing with returning officers who are compelled to declare winners under duress, among others. With the Commission receiving over 800 pre-election petitions far before the 2019 general election, INEC believes the electoral legal framework should provide clear procedures for the party primaries. The Imo State Governor has vowed to go after Treasury looters of the state. On our Politics Today show, um, Governor Hope Zadima hinted that recovery of the state's stolen funds is key to his economic recovery program, which he says would go a long way in improving the fortunes of the people of Imo State. If there is anything in the process of doing this, my job, I've seen any stolen thing of the government, of course I'll go for it. I'll recover it immediately. I will, I will do everything at my best to recover stolen properties of government, stolen monies, stolen anything. Of course, it has to be recovered. Well, that's our program this afternoon. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.